Scooby-Doo is a seminal figure in cartoon history. He's a pop culture icon who will forever remain timeless through the eyes of youth. He's had a butt ton of different television shows over the years, and along the way has spawned all different kinds of video games. One of which being Scooby-Doo Classic Creed Capers for the N64. Now believe it or not, this was kind of an anticipated title for Scooby-Doo fans, as it was the first time he had ever been made into a 3D perspective. So I think a lot of people expected it to be good because of that. Is it actually good though? Well then, we'll just have to find out now then, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> the game begins with Shaggy and Scooby walking down a road returning to the mystery machine after having just seen a movie. They start to get scared and run just a little bit faster to that good old green van where they've probably done a little bit more than just eat sandwiches if you're smoking what I'm token. They meet up with the gang at the museum after finding an invoice for the museum lying on the ground addressed to an R. Necros. Bad thing for them is that they found it near an abandoned truck that had just crashed into a pole and was on fire. Apparently the thought of even bothering to call the police for the dangerous situation that is a truck that's on fire never entered their minds and instead the game somehow determined that a mystery is afoot. Because in their minds there's always something going on. I mean, th there just has to be with all that weed they're smoking. Luckily for them, they're correct as the museum caretaker just so happened to wander by, which is also like the third coincidental thing to happen back to back to back, tells the game that a reanimated piece of armor known as the Black Knight is scouring through the halls to scare people away. Oh no, no buddy's visiting the museum. Oh, I just, oh, I, I feel so bad. Oh, just gosh darn it. Wait, this is starting to seem just a little bit familiar. If I do so believe, I think it was an actual episode of Scooby-Doo. Yeah, you know what? Surprisingly enough, this was the pilot episode of the original series. Oh, so punnily called, What a Night for a Night. Ha! That made me laugh. So after sneaking into the museum from an open window, which I guess museums, you know, they totally have windows that are openable just like, just like a goddamn house. The gang just kind of stand around the entrance after Shaggy and Scooby let them in, when suddenly the lights go out and Velma disappears out of thin air. This kind of thing happens all the time in the show with either Daphne or Velma, and I would say that I'm determined to go and rescue her, but first I feel like I have to point out just what is up with Fred's face. It's so strange and out of place that it looks as if it should be an emote on Twitch chats or something. So after recouping, the game splits up to find more clues and hopefully Velma somewhere in the process. I decided to venture around in the Egyptian exhibit to look for anything I could find, when the Black Knight appeared and started to chase me around. Okay, now this I really like. Being chased around by the villain helps fill in the gap between looking around for clues and actually makes the game feel like there's a bad guy who won't just pop in and out for a few seconds, which is quite unlike what the villains did from Scooby-Doo Mystery for the Super Nintendo. Cause that's all they would do. So for this game, it's definitely a breath of fresh air to be chased by the actual villain in the flesh, or uh, in the suit, I guess. The only downside to that is it's really easy to shake him off, because all you have to do is travel to another area of the game. So, uh, let's just say my excitement for that didn't last very long. There is a nice little nudge to the show where you can find a disguise at a certain area of the environment that'll confuse the bad guy, so you can look around for clues where they tend to hang out. It's a cute little feature, but you only use it once for each chapter. And since there's only four chapters in the game, it feels kind of irrelevant to do this just to find a clue. But hey, at least we get to see Shaggy and Scooby pretend to be hieroglyphs. Worth it. So after finding all the clues in the Egyptian exhibit, I eventually made my way to a different part of the museum and wait, is that a... Is that a dinosaur? Is that a real life in the flesh? Gold bloom and dinosaur? I'm so very taken aback. I'm just, I, I'm not quite sure what to do. This better not be some kind of Jurassic prank. So let me explain something that happened as soon as I entered this room. I did my normal routine of wandering around and one of the very first things I did was walk over to the corner of the room when all of a sudden just, oh, like, okay, yeah, just, all right, I guess I'll just teleport straight to Velma who signed up to a pole. <laughs> what? Okay, so when that happened, I legitimately thought I had like triggered the event of finding Velma through the wall and like glitched the game somehow. But after looking it up, apparently it's some kind of secret. All right, since I guess the devs of this game have a completely different idea of what a secret is, let me lay it down for you. 
Finding the whistle of Mario 3? That's a secret. The Chris Houlihan room from Link to the Past. That is also a secret. Getting the Hadouken in Mega Man X. That is, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a secret. That's a pretty secret thing to find. Putting a spot in the corner that takes you directly to Velma is the exact opposite of a secret. Just because you think the player won't happen to travel to that one particular location doesn't make the transition from corner of the wall to suddenly in front of Velma any less confusing. Regardless, I found Velma, but she lost her glasses after getting ransacked by the monster. Of course. So I had to find them before I could get her out of the exhibit, which is also the most freaking evil Knievel death-defying part of the museum, as all of the dinosaurs are moving in what I like to call take no prisoner patterns, as the dinosaurs scare the shit out of Shaggy and Scooby. So I found her glasses, got her out of there, and eventually started to piece together the mystery clue by clue, which ultimately led me to face the reality that this game is pretty boring. The only threat looming over you is the monster you have to deal with in each chapter of the game, and even then they aren't the most difficult of foes to evade. It can be a little bit difficult to run away, especially when the camera angle changes to Battlefield Earth level of Dutch angles, but it was never anything too terrible. There's also other enemies you have to deal with as well, which helps to broaden out the amount of opposition throughout the game, like the dinosaurs at this stage, alongside some rats, bats, and other atypical rodents that only Shaggy and Scooby would be frightened of. It's nothing I haven't seen before, and it feels kinda cliche that they throw in a hodgepodge of overused enemy types that do nothing to be unique or interesting in any way possible. Except for maybe this security guard who can catch you and throw you out of the museum, but it really isn't that big of a deal, cause you know, there's, there's the ladder right there that I used to get into the museum in the first place, like dude, it's right there, it's right there, dude! I think one of the biggest problems this game has is that much akin to its Super Nintendo predecessor, its main focus is on the finding of clues, but there's no real way to make that interesting. The gameplay mostly consists of running away from the monster, trying to avoid any damage from the smaller enemies, and finding clues. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad that they're trying to make it similar to the cartoon, but it feels like they haven't found the correct transition from television screen to video game cartridge to make a game that's fun and engaging. Instead, if anything, it feels more tedious and like it was a simple way to cash in on the Scooby-Doo money train. In a way, it's kind of like a collect-a-thon, but with those games you have tighter controls and special abilities that can help solve puzzles or take out any enemy in your path. The clues or trap pieces you collect in this game don't feel meaningful. If anything, they feel like the dots from Pac in Time. You absolutely need them to advance onto the next level. Unfortunately, and much unlike collect-a-thons, with this game you have no means of defending yourself. You can't do anything. Like, you know, I get that in the show they never, like, incurred any kind of, like, physical violence on the monster that they were chasing after, you know, like, they never, like, punched or kicked them or anything, but at the same time, like, this is a video game, like, you gotta, you gotta give me something to defend myself. Like, even in, like, the Super Nintendo Scooby-Doo mystery game, like, I could throw a fish to take care of enemies, and I never thought that I would say that I missed being able to throw a fish before, but god damn do I miss being able to throw a fucking fish. You know, out of everything that I've seen from this, I guess I'm just hoping that one day I'll be able to find a Scooby-Doo game that'll break away from the norm of clue collecting and stick to something a bit more traditional. But I guess that's neither here nor there for this game. Cause right now, we got ourselves a bad guy to catch. So after collecting everything the game deemed necessary, the plan is set. Shaggy and Scooby will lead the Black Knight from wherever he is all the way to the Egyptian exhibit, where Fred will use a lamp to cast his shadow onto a mat to produce a scary image, Velma will use a tape recorder to play a recording of Scooby's growl at half speed to make him sound more menacing, and Daphne will tie together the Black Knight with a spool of rope, assuming that he or she is scared stiff from the audiovisual phenomena that is happening before them. Oh my god, this is the dumbest plan I've ever heard in my entire life, but you know what? Fuck it. Hit it! Scooby Doo Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby Doo Doo, where are you? We need some help from you now. Come on, Scooby Doo, I see you pretending you got a sliver. But you're not fooling me, cause I can see the way you can't get a shiver. You know we gotta miss a beat, it's all Scooby Doo, get ready for your act. Don't hold back. And Scooby Doo, if you can do it, you're gonna have yourself a Scooby snack. That's a bad We did it! We got the bad guy with one of our kooky schemes again! How does this keep happening? It's like we're that one kid from Home Alone. You just don't fuck with us. So it turns out that the Black Knight was none other than Mr. Wickles. 
the curator, aka the only other person in the building. After capturing him, they bring up the question as to why the invoice they found at the beginning of the game was made out to an R Necros and what that has to do with the museum. Through each level, you get closer and closer to discovering who R Necros could be, and it's ultimately the only real overarching story of the game, if you could even call it that. Alongside this weird green guy who looks strikingly similar to Doc Brown from Back to the Future, who's most more than likely the evil mastermind behind the whole operations pulling the strings. Needless to say, it's a paper-thin story that really doesn't have anything to do with anything, and it really isn't worth playing through the entire game just to find out who our Necros is. So I'll just go on ahead and tell you so you won't waste your time. Our Necros is the weird green-headed guy who just so happened to be the last monster of the game. Yup, that was totally worth playing through the entire game just to know that. Our Necros, more like our dead Cros. <laughs> This is a pretty mediocre Scooby-Doo game. For the very first and only Scooby-Doo title to stumble its way onto the N64, I can definitely imagine a lot of fans' disappointment with this subpart entry. For as much as they nailed the aesthetic of Scooby-Doo, they didn't entirely make it into anything memorable. And as a result, we're left with yet another crappy Scooby-Doo game. Maybe one of these Halloweens come across a good one. I can only hope. But hey, I hope you all have a happy and safe Halloween Eat some awesome candy for me. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please consider subscribing and also hitting that like button. Both of those really help me out. As per usual, here are some videos for your viewing pleasure that I hope that you guys would like, and I think you would like these ones. And also a very big special thank you to my patrons, Ollie Moore, Tim Sykes, Corey Etzel. You guys brighten my life each and every each and every day with your with your presence and your continued support. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you. Just a little smooch for you. Mm, a little, a little I don't know how to make out, so um, I'm imagining that's what it's like. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video, my friends. Stay frosty, my friends. Is that, is that a good send? Is that is that a good is that a good send off? Do you think? What do you think? B bag of chips.